Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Flash Forge Artemis 3D printer. This is a stylish printer, fully assembled out of the box, and has features that sound great on paper, like a full color touchscreen and Wi-Fi connection. But how well does it work in practice? Let's find out. Before we begin, this printer was sent to me for review by Flashforge. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. So let's get into it. The Flash Forge Artemis is a filament-based 3D printer with a print volume of 190 mm by 195 mm by 200 mm. The hot end is located at the top of the printer and moves in the X and Y axes, while the bed moves up and down for the Z axis. The hot end is a standard 0.4 mm brass nozzle with a PTFE liner, cooled by a single cooling fan. The hot end is connected to the direct drive extruder, which does an excellent job feeding the 1.75 mm filament. Flash Forge says that the hot end can heat up to 260 degrees Celsius, but with the PTFE tubing, I wouldn't push it past 240 degrees myself. That's still more than capable of printing with PET-G and ABS. The direct drive extruder also allows for use of flexible filaments like TPU. There is also a down-facing LED on the hot end, which will illuminate the print. Around the back of the machine is the spool holder and the filament runout detector. The holder is removable, just sliding into place, and easily held all of the spools I tested. The extruder is mounted on the X and Y axis gantry. It's a normal X and Y configuration, not a core X Y configuration. So the X axis motor moves the hot end left and right, while the Y axis motor moves the entire X axis forwards and backwards. All axes consist of linear bearings on steel rods, which give a very smooth feeling motion. Moving down towards the bed, Flashboards includes two options for bed surfaces, a smooth glass platform which is easily removable, and a magnetic flexible PEI steel plate. I did most of my testing with the glass platform, and it performed extremely well. When the surface is clean, PLA sticks very well on the glass, and it pops off with little effort once the glass has cooled down and the glass is easily removable by unlocking the two clips in the front. The bed surface sits on a heated aluminum bed, which heats up to 60 degrees Celsius in about one minute. Continuing down the front, we find the 4.3 inch touchscreen display. This display is nice and bright, and for the most part works as expected. The touch detection is a little finicky, however. I find it sometimes double pressing, which can be a problem when loading and unloading filaments, since the unload button is right under the filament loads OK button, so I've accidentally started an unload a couple of times. The Flash Forge Artemis has Wi-Fi connection capabilities, but I've been unable to test it due to the double pressing preventing me from correctly entering my long Wi-Fi password. I must have spent about 30 minutes trying to enter my password correctly, but to no use. Supposedly, with Wi-Fi, you can send prints and update the firmware remotely. With my Wi-Fi connection not working, I had to resort to using the included 8GB USB drive in the USB-A port next to the touchscreen. Prints can be copied into the internal memory of the printer, although I'm not sure of the size of that internal memory. The touchscreen menus are nicely laid out, and it's easy to navigate and select prints. Removing the bottom cover exposes the 32-bit control board and power supply. The Artemis is very quiet in operations, with the stepper drivers near silence, and the fans only emitting a low hum. It's very comfortable to be in the same room while the Artemis is printing. As for slicers, the Flash Forge Artemis can use any slicer you'd like, such as Kira or Prusa Slicer, but they also provide their own slicer called Flash Print 5. I found Flash Prints easy to work with, although some of the default settings are pretty conservative, such as the 50 mm a second print speeds. But after tweaking the profiles a little, I was getting great results with Flash Prints. Flash Prints also saves a thumbnail of the G code, which the Artemis will display when selecting files for print. The unboxing experience was great, as the Artemis arrives fully assembled. Just just remove the foam from the packing, slide in the spool holder, cut a few zip ties and you are ready to print. Take care when cutting the zip ties not to cut the belt though, as some of the ties are on the belts themselves. The bed leveling process was also simple, as the touchscreen walks you through the process. I was up and running in about 20 minutes, very easy. So let's take a look at some of the example prints. All of these were sliced using Flash Print 5. This 3D Benchy turned out great. The walls are smooth, and there is minimal drooping on the overhangs of the doors and windows. Flash print placed the seam at the very front of the boat though, ruining the smoothness of the bow. Not a major defect, but one that the slicer could have avoided. I love the Spiral Octopus for testing bed adhesion. Since each arm segment is printed separately, if any segment doesn't stick to the bed, it will ruin the entire print. But the Artemis printed the octopus perfectly. The arm segments were all separate, and the head is nice and smooth. Good showing. I wanted to test the full height of the printer, so I scaled this dice tower up to the full 200mm height, and it is a beautiful print. There's no defects on the walls that I can see, and there's no stringing between the pillars on the front. 
and even the small sword and chest printed well. Next up, these deer decorations. They have delicate antlers, not more than one shell thickness, which can be very difficult for some printers. And the Artemis printed them much better than expected. There is some slight stringing between the antlers, but I am impressed that I was able to keep such overhangs intact. All of the previous prints were at 0.18mm layer heights, so let's try something thicker. This Hulk was printed at 80mm a second at 0.3mm layer heights, really pushing the extruder to see what it's capable of. And it turned out pretty good. The vertical surfaces are consistent, and it did a decent job at the tough overhangs. The top surfaces are a little under extruded, however, with slightly more gaps between the walls than I would like. That can all be adjusted in the slicer, though. The Flashforge Artemis has a filament runout detector located at the back of the machine. Strangely enough, the detector is off by default, so you have to enable it in the settings for it to work. When the detector is enabled, it will play an audible chime and pause the print when it detects that you've run out of filament. You can then use the menu to load in new filament. However, when it pauses, it turns off both the hot end and the bed heaters. That means that if you aren't nearby to immediately swap out the filaments, the bed will cool off and your part may release from the bed. The power loss detection also has some caveats. If power is lost mid-prints, when power is restored, it will prompt you to continue the unfinished prints. It then heats back up and resumes the layer where it left off. This worked well on my prints sliced in flash prints. However, when I tested it on a print sliced in Cura, it crashed into the printed parts and lost track of where it was. There might be something in my Cura start G code that confused it. Nope. After testing both the filament sensor and power loss detection on this cube, I think it turned out great with minimal defects. I did run into a few additional problems during my testing. When the printer first arrived, I wasn't able to start any of the sample prints. I just kept getting please retry errors when I tried to start. I asked Flashforge support for the latest firmware, and after flashing my firmware with the USB drive, I didn't run into that problem again. Finally, when printing the dice tower, the printer completely froze 32 hours into the print. The motors were both stopped, and the touchscreen was completely unresponsive. However, both the hot end and the bed heaters were still heated. When I power cycled the printer, the power loss detection kicked in and asked if I wanted to resume. And that worked flawlessly. It resumed right where it left off, and it's not even noticeable on the final prints. I'm not sure what caused the freeze, but it didn't happen again during my testing. In conclusion, the Flashforge Artemis is a pleasant machine to work with. I like the design and form factor. It's much less imposing than the bare aluminum extrusions of many other printers these days. It's quiet while operating, and the built-in lights and buzzers give it character. It's a printer that seems friendly and approachable, but just as important as its looks, the Artemis prints extremely well, with very consistent results across different layer heights and materials. The conservative settings in Flashforge give high quality results out of the box, but you can also push the machine to print faster when needed. I was impressed with the build quality of the machine and the quality of the prints that I was achieving. The Flashforge Artemis retails for $589 US dollars, with sales sometimes dropping it down to the $500 range. While that is more expensive than many other printers with similar print volumes and features, the Artemis makes up for it in design. I think that the Artemis would be perfect for educational environments or in a home setting. It's a great printer for those just starting out, where other bare metal printers might just be too intimidating. So thank you all for watching my review of the Flashforge Artemis 3D printer. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're here, why not check out my other 3D printer review, like my recent review of the King Rune KP3S. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.